you're listening to The Primal Happiness Show, a podcast dedicated to helping you thrive in this crazy modern world. Every Tuesday, we explore the nature of how our minds really work, what exactly the human animal requires to thrive, and how we can live happier and more fulfilling lives. If you're new here and haven't yet taken our free class, then there's no better place to get a jump start on reclaiming your primal happiness. It's where we'll guide you step-by-step through our antidote to today's modern world. Simply head on over to primalhappiness.co slash antidote to get the free class and discover how to thrive without having to move to a planet that's not so crazy as ours. But now, your host, Leanne brooks Tyler. Hello and Happy New Year, my beautiful people. A huge warm welcome back to the show. In today's crazy modern world, men and women are living shallow, disconnected and unfulfilling lives. So we created the path for those who are ready to reclaim their wildness and actualize their deepest gifts. Whilst we don't currently have any openings to walk the path of Wake the Wild, I would strongly suggest you come join our free Facebook group if you're not already a member. It's such a beautiful community of wise and wild people. And our intention over the coming months is to nurture the group to make it an even more powerful place to be. So come join us over at facebook.com slash group slash primal happiness really hope to see you there soon. And of course, once we start opening up our next lot of courses, we'll be posting in there first. So you'll be the first to hear when we do open up again for the next set of uh, circles and courses, which won't be very long in the next month or two. And now on to this week's show, I spoke to Elizabeth Purvis. Elizabeth is a master business coach and metaphysical teacher to thousands of women around the world. She is the creator of Feminine Magic, where her speciality is leading experienced coaches, healers, mentors, and spiritual teachers to embody their highest level and scale their businesses on demand without webinars, launches, or sales calls. Elizabeth combines her in-depth experience of transformational coaching, digital marketing, and online entrepreneurship with her two decades metaphysical practice to empower her clients to manifest their biggest, boldest money and lifestyle goals or delivering their sole purpose work. In this show, we spoke about the practice of real magic, what gets in the way of creating results, and how to remove those obstacles, plus a whole bunch of really rich, juicy other things. Um, It really was such a gorgeous episode. I cannot wait to share this one with you. Let's dive in. Hello, Elizabeth. (laughs) A huge welcome to the show. I'm so happy to be here. So oh. happy we get to spend this time together. It's going to be good. Excited. Mm. Talking about all the most amazing topics. I, I was just like, how do I pick a topic when there are so many amazing topics I could be talking to you about? I know. So we haven't chosen. No, We're just going to talk about all of them. Yeah, I can go on and on and on. <laughs> I'm going to stand back. <laughs> yeah, no, this is going to be gorgeous. I already know it. I already know it. So um, I feel like I need to kind of pick a, a direction to just at least set sail in. I, I know that we're going to get into just so much just amazing territory, almost no matter how we start, but uh, we need to start somewhere. So I guess something I'm sure we're going to constantly talk about during this um, time is magic. Yeah. And Something I absolutely love about you, and I've noticed recently, I don't know if it's just, you know, sometimes you go through a space where some, like you see the same thing in your awareness a lot, where just yeah. recently I've noticed, and there's not loads of them, but there's a few women like yourself who have got this amazing kind of magical, spiritual way of being and have quite a kind of um, like engineer's mind, let's say. Yes, um, which yes, I you're think, right. there are yeah, quite a few of us, yeah, yeah, and that for me is, um, you know, before I got into this work, I was in IT. I very much got that kind of mind myself, and yeah. so when I see other women that have got that kind of like somehow are able to hold both, make sense of both, are able to kind of apply logic 
where it needs to be, suspend logic and be with the unknown where that needs to be. Like yeah. I get a real thrill there. And so yeah. I wasn't Thank expecting you. to start here, but that I would just love to know what your sense of that is. Because for me, that feels like there's something magical about that in itself. Something very powerful, something yeah. that allows like a greater degree of creation perhaps and certainly transmission. As in, I hear yeah. what you're saying in a way that perhaps yeah. if someone didn't have that kind of... But engineering mind, let's say, I think yeah. I, I struggle to perhaps listen in a way that I can if it's someone like you talking about these things. Yeah, thank you for that. First of all, thank you for that acknowledgement. It means a lot to me. Like, I feel like that's one of the strengths that I really bring to the table. Mm. Um, my, I grew up in a family of scientists. My dad would teach taught thermodynamics and wow. <laughs> to, you know, college students for years and years and years. And he was an entrepreneur on the side, which is really interesting. You know, you're like, you look at your parents and you're like, I'm never going to be like you. And I definitely <laughs> had some like, Dad, I'm never going to be like you. You're working all the time and you're teaching these kids all the time. And, da, 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 da. and it's hilarious because I'm exactly like him. Like I'm either mm. teaching or I'm running like this. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, but he was, it's like, it, like, we were a family of scientists with this, like science with a capital mm. S. And, um, and I struggled against that for quite some time in a nutshell, because, you know, I, like my kind of thing as a kid was with my family was sort of feeling like I was the black sheep and not being seen and heard. And here I am this like closet occultist at 12. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And have you got into the cool. whole witching path early, didn't you? Really yeah. Well, I, mm. no, I was a big sneaker. Like I was, because I didn't feel like I could be out there. And I, I was mm. big, I was big on sneaking, which is, you know, has its own set of issues. <laughs> that's what it's that way, you know? Um, but that's just, you know, that was the kind of the coping mechanism. But um, there was some, somewhere, again, and not to make it too long of a story, there was a point at which I surrendered to the science and I could see how it was this entryway to all this other stuff. Mm. And, um, and I got a master's in computer science from New York university, which was very hard and very humbling. I was used to being the smartest kid in the room and I didn't know what the fudge I was doing. Like I was not, <laughs> I had liberal, I, I, I had a political science, American political theory going into it. So I didn't know. I mean, I was just, I, it was a struggle. It was really like a struggle for however long it was, three years, but I got through it. I did pretty well, you know? Um, and then I was, I was, uh, you know, building computer networks and stuff. And um, I think what it, like the strength that it brings to get to the sort of the, the manifesting application in feminine magic, we talk a ton about the two ha- what I call the two halves of the manifesting equation. You're, and people talk about the two halves a lot. A lot of people talk about masculine and feminine polarity. And that's an incredibly important topic that for whatever reason, I didn't like my stuff didn't end up being framed in that way. Maybe because it was Mm. so ingrained in me as a, as a Wiccan, right. I was, I'm a Gardnerian witch and we're very big on polarity. And I'm like, Mm. just, you know, the men are in the circle too. And there's, it's just like second nature. So I didn't see the, I like the importance of that. Yeah. With me, I wasn't, you know, yeah, it wasn't, Mm. it wasn't sort of present. So my stuff developed in this other kind of like two halves manifesting equation, mm. your divine side and your human side. Yeah. The engine, and that shows up in all kinds of different ways. And it shows up in the energetic stuff and then the physical plane actualization part. Mm. And a lot of what we do in feminine magic is about bridging those two things. How mm. is it, you know, I learned years ago, like when I was you know, doing my initial kind of training in magic from the wicked perspective, it was like, we're creating stuff up there. Like you create something on the non-physical plane and it's on the non-physical plane. It's like, it actually exists, but we've got to learn how to bring it in here. So the, the, the logic and the structures and the stuff on the engineering side is very much about actualizing on the, on the physical plane, uh, mm. actualizing the physical plane um, and how do we do that? And I've always been, because for me, magic is very practical. I, there's a certain kind of magician who just does magic and that's what they do. They do magic, kind of they do magic. And one of my teachers is a guy named um, Donald Mike, uh, Craig. And he was very, you know, he's a very famous author. Famous. 
he was very like well known in our circle and stuff. And I met him in my early twenties and stuff. And I saw he's he's passed now. He passed a while ago, um, but he had an article on <laughs> on a website that was like, "Why don't magicians make money?" And the answer <laughs> the the answer was the answer is like because we're busy doing magic. Basically, was his answer. Mm. And, and for me, even way back. I'm like, this has got to be in a particular direction. Like, what's the mm. point of doing not actually actualizing? Yeah. So the, the system side really, really helps with that. And I think that's one of the things that that helps our, our people as well. And that's why, like, I really was like, oh, I see why. Because there are many times I'm like, what am I doing? Pardon, I don't know if I can swear up here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll mark it explicit just for you, Elizabeth. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. I was like, what am I doing? I had many, many times along this path where I'm like, what on earth am I doing this for? Mm. Why? 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 Like, what? why am I making this choice? Why am I being led in this direction where I kind of don't really want to do it? Yeah. And, and the yeah. engineering part was, I was struggling with like, well, I would rather be expressing myself in some other way, but I'm not confident enough to do that. So this is the direction I'm choosing and I'm choosing to kind of loop it together. And now I see you know, how beneficial it's been. So, mm. And there's then there's also the masculine aspect too. We talk about the feminine masculine. I think another thing that I hear a lot um, that I'm really appreciative of is people say I, I balance those two poles pretty well. And I, yeah. I got my wobbles mm. just like everybody. I've got my stuff, right? But um, I feel like the, I feel like there's, you know, a pretty good balance of those things in me. And mm. Yeah, that really makes sense. I really feel that in you. Um, yeah. So a couple of things came to mind as you're talking. One, um, I may not be quoting you quite right on this, but I think you'll get the, <laughs> the gist. Um, I've heard you say something like, when we're, when we're kind of calling something in for us, if we've got a design, then we're kind of calling it into us. The way it will yeah. come to us is going to be using the kind of the laws of this plane, i.e. And I think I've actually heard you say it's not like gold ingots going to write rain down on our heads. Like we need gold to be working with. Rain down your head. Yeah. <laughs> and I love that. And I think that I think that part is often left when people are teaching things of this kind, that it's left so vague. And I think the way you describe that, I think is so powerful, so clear as in, yes, huh. there's magic. And then the way you are bringing things to you is going yes. to be via the ways that things happen on this earthly plane, which I think is brilliant, yeah. which then I think yes. leads really nicely to something we touched on that I said I'd really like to know more about before we start recording, which is you had already a real deep understanding of magic and kind of creating your life by magic. And yet I know that you said there was a kind of point where it wasn't creating the, uh, let's say, wealth or business success that you mm-hmm. actually wanted. Yeah. And now here you are. And it does. What was the, what happened? What was the shift? What did you see differently, do differently that kind of yeah, bridged that gap? That's an awesome question. There's a, there is a lot. So Part of it, I'm going to try to compartmentalize slash bullet point. So I was trained initially in a, in a tradition. Like, um, you know, I, I found witchcraft, you know, modern day witchcraft, Wicca, which is not the witchcraft of the Satanists and, you know, the Christians who are anti-witchcraft. Um, I just got to say that. Very different. Um, <laughs> Disclaimer. Yeah, they don't see it that way, but, you know, I, there's like... <laughs> we're, we're we're all about more life to all less to none kind of you know and mm. um in any case i i found that and it was one of those like oh wow this is what i am like i found it in when i was 24 and it was literally like i read a book i was not a, i was not wiccan before reading the book i read the book okay this is what i am we're done and off i went and i and i you know was learning from different people and had different experiences in new york because i was kind of figuring it out but then I found my people and it was eight years plus of training and, you know, three initiations and kind of the whole thing. And so there was a culture there, right? Not to go, not to go way down the rabbit hole, but there was a culture there around what you used magic for and what you didn't. And it wasn't mm. like, they were like, you can't lose magic for personal gain. Not at all. Right. But there was, there wasn't the, and, and my tradition, one of the things my tradition was and still is like very good at was like, you need to have your shit together. 
again, I'm swearing, sorry. You need to have, you need to have your life together in order to do this. Like we don't accept mm. people who are off riding the magic carpet. Like you've got to be, um, you know, you need to have a job and you need to be responsible and pretty much everyone in our tradition is like liberally arts educated and like too, you know, nerdy for their own good. Um, but, but there was a culture there and it was not necessarily the culture of like, go out and make a ton of money. Mm, right. That's interesting. So there was a lot of, which is, which is the case in the collective as a whole, right? Mm-hmm. If you, um, you know, one of my favorite teachers, uh, David Nagel, I remember hearing him say, like, if you sit down and tell your family that you're going to make a ton of money, like watch what they say. You know? <laughs> so, mm. so there was some of that. It just wasn't the focus. And then there's all the stuff around money that we have, all the projections that we put on money and all of like the reasons, all, all the ways that I was acting out, you know, stuff with my dad and stuff with power, disempowered, mm-hmm. like in the, with money. Right. So I, you know, it was, it was, and I was doing that unconsciously before I even came into this world. And then when I came into the world of the, of the online, right. And quit my job and I quit my job on a wing and a prayer, which I do not recommend at all. Right? <laughs> really created a tremendous amount of struggle because I didn't know how to handle mm. it. Um, <clears throat> but I, I started to put the two together because I'm like, magic for me always has to have a purpose. Oh, and I should also say with Wicca, I was much more interested in, in the worship part and the connection part mm. and the relationship with the goddess and, and the God. Yeah. Um, like the sort of devotional, yeah, spiritual, the devotional, yeah, the divine. The year. I was mm. much more interested in the, in the rituals and stuff rather than learning all the magics. And part of that was because of just my receiving meter was really low. I was definitely, mm. in the, oh, I shouldn't want anything, you know? So yeah. when I got out into this world, it was like, okay, um, I need to figure this world out. And it was actually my husband who kind of got, kind of woke me up to it. Um, first of all, I also saw, because, because I, I came into this world at the very beginning of 2007. That was the very mm-hmm. start. The secret was still all the rage. And I remember. Oh, wow. Yeah. In, those days. And going like, <laughs> holy smokes, I can't believe the cat is out of the bag, you know? <laughs> and then I started mm. to pay attention to the personal development industry versus reading every magic book on the shelf. And I'm like, holy smokes, the cat has been out of the bag. Mm. Like, what the what? And that's when the, the kind of desire in me to go, okay, these tools are so powerful for people to change their lives and have sovereignty over their life. I want to amplify this in the world because the world is clearly asking for it. So there was that sort of penny drop first. Mm. And then there was the, you know, um, I don't do ma- like we don't, I don't do magic generally without a real specific outcome. I'm very outcome focused. And I should say, you don't have to be that way. Like there's nothing wrong with doing magic for magic's sake. It just doesn't align. And I'm, and I'm serious mm. about that. There's a lot of magicians doing magic for magic's sake, and it's all good, right? Mm. But so there was that part of it. And then there was the part that I was, I mean, I was just plain struggling. I mean, I was completely in the sinkhole for the first two years. And it was my husband who was like, you know, um, you kind of have a, you, you have a couple of clues that other people don't. <laughs> so maybe like put them together. And I'm like, oh, okay. Mm. And that's kind of how it started. And of course, when it started, I was confronted with, oh my chisel, like I have got so much crap to get through. Mm. I totally, like I started to see, you know, all the ways in which I had disempowered myself. I had made agreements with, with, you know, people, places and things and all the ways that I wasn't fully stepping into all of it. And uh, that was like, holy Holy, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was one of those that looked really like she had it all together on the outside. And I did, you know, I had a near six figure job, super smart, super caring, had friends, you know, I don't come from a traditional, like a background of traditional trauma, let's say, mm. you know, my parents are amazing human beings, um, you know, and I had my stuff with them. I had other things going on that I needed to work through there. 
Um, but on the certain, and then I went to like the school and I was Phi Beta Kappa and like I had all that, right? <clears throat> but the problem was I was completely not, I was just not, I was not doing what I'm here to do and f- stepping into the fullness of, of me. I was sneaking mm. and hiding in the closet and I was in the closet to my family as, as a Wiccan for 10 years. And that's a oh, lot. Wow. That says a lot. Mm, like and that's yes. one of the reasons why mm. when I did come out to them, which was in 2008, yeah, so it was like 12 years actually. Because I, I no, no, I came. It was 10 because I came out to them in 2006 when I officially got married. Yeah, we got the, the, the actual wedding part of our marriage. I was 26. <laughs> sorry, I was out. But um, but yeah, so it was t- it was it was 10 years and um you know, when, so when I found this world and decided, I was like, I'm not doing that again. I can't do that again. You know, mm. I can't, but that was, that was the, that was the, that was the big problem. Like I was hiding all yeah. of what I really mm. was and what I really wanted to do. And I was petrified about what people would think. And just, there was just so much. So it was like, okay. And all of that is related to money, by the way, like all of it is related to money, you know? So mm. it was really a matter of, okay, I'm going to roll up my sleeves and, and just dive head first. And that, that has always been my strategy. Like the only way out is through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And does that kind of answer the question? I want to make sure that we did, but I think we did. I think so. Let me just, um, hmm. this, uh, this other, like, I think this place is all I want to dive into as well. So I'm yeah. just trying to so check in. Like, like, what was the it? gap? Why hadn't I applied magic to wealth? And so mm. for one, wasn't part of the culture. You know, um, number two. So true. Just when you said that, it's one of those obvious things. But I think because we constantly talk about money, constantly talk about we want more money, we forget how much of a taboo it actually is. It's a bit similar to sex in that way, isn't it? It's like you know, we all we all want it, we all talk about it, but when we don't really like, if someone like you know, I want more sex, everyone be like, what? Let's have money, really? (laughs) Yeah, money, sex, and God are like the three taboos, right? Which is the place where all the good stuff is. You yeah. know, but, um, but to make a lot of money is really subversive. And also, mm. I mean, at that time, when I, when I started my business, this was another big piece of it. Um, at that point, I had spent over five years, more like six or seven, really trying to break into the comics industry and break into writing. And I had all of the, I was in New York and I was, and I was connected with a lot of my Heroes. There's a woman named Terry Windling who is the inventor of urban fantasy. Like she gets credit for that. You know, all the twilights and the whatnots and the vampires and all the things. Like they owe a big debt to Terry because she was the one when she was in her early 20s as an editor in, you know, Ace Books or whatever, was the one who said, Oh, we need to bring myth and mythology into the present day and create oh, these, wow. create these mm. stories. And I met Terry and then started connecting with Terry and was a part of her whole circle. And so Neil Gaiman and Charles Vest and Holly Black. I mean, I had writing lessons from Holly Black and stuff like people who mm-hmm. were really, really, uh, and people that whose books were on my shelf as a kid. So I was very, yeah. very deep in this world and learning how to write comics. And that's how I met my husband and everything. So for me, so for me to like find this work and I found direct response copywriting and loved it. I was like, oh my God, everyone's going to think I'm a crazy person. Mm. I like marketing. Not only do I like marketing, like I like to write the sales letters you get in the mail. (laughs) (laughs) That's messed up. And I couldn't couldn't reconcile. And so I had all this conflict Mm. rather than just going, yeah, direct response copy. Yeah. You know, which is one of my, Mm. you know, the things I'm most proud of doing. And I spent, you know, three years really kind of learning the chops and then and all of that with, with the, those guys, um, I was in all this conflict and that is a great way mm. <laughs> to block money. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Totally. So yeah. It just, it, like, there was just a ton of stuff to move through and, and, and a real, like, and this, I think people really can relate to. It's like seeing what the truth is about yourself. And seeing the truth about what it is you're being asked to do or change or transform and just going, 
I'm going to let like all the jibba jabba go and just go in that direction. And I mm. did not have that skill for the first five, six, seven years of this. I was, yeah. You know, really I, at the same time, I'm like, I'm going forward anyway, but it was a, it was a struggle. And so I yeah. had to get this idea. <laughs> mm. Isn't it yeah. incredible the power that um, I guess you could sum it up in that thought of what will they think? You know, that, that, what will they think? It is incredible how much power that can have to limit yeah. us. Yeah, dampen our magic, damping how much we can receive. Like, wow, just so much yeah. just there. It's, I mean, and, and what I came to find out later through my studies of, you know, NLP, which is also magic. Like when I found NLP, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, seriously. Um, <laughs> um, you know, uh, that our deepest, our deepest fear as human beings, like primal fear, like baked into our nervous system. It's not going away. There's no getting rid of it, you know, is fear of being kicked out. Hmm. so do we want to how we want to like want to really put the reins on just what will they think you know Hmm. and um every every magician (laughs) that i if we really want to create our lives as we choose in alignment with desire with a capital d which is that urge for growth that we have inside of us if we're going to do that then we have to do the work of uncoupling Hmm. those those things like not not getting not getting rid of it because we you know, we honor everything. Like I'm, I'm really happy with my physical system and all the things it does for me, you know, but I want to be a choice. I want to mm. be able to a couple things enough so that I can have, you know, the sacred pause where I can make a different choice where I can go, Oh, wait a minute. So what will people think is here now? What do I want to do about that? Mm. <clears throat> you know? Yeah. Would you say that, um, what you were saying earlier about that um, dance of the divine and the human and not mm-hmm. needing to dismiss or deny either, but that kind of, they both have a place. They both have, they're both sacred. They're both welcome. And, yeah. you know, sometimes that animal, that human animal is going to be freaking the hell out. Oh my God, I'm going to get chucked out the tribe. And then that divine part of us can have that elevation of like, Hey, you know, that's not yeah. necessarily so. It's okay that you're feeling like that. And there's this possibility. There's this yes. that's true for us. Exactly. Would you sort of like say that's where that comes in? Like that naming yeah, of totally. that, and, yeah. and essentially, you know, in our highest level manifesting program, a big part of it is that what we're trying to do is work with both sides mm. and honor both sides. And this idea of honoring it all and accepting it all. We, we practice what I like to call radical acceptance in mm. feminine magic. And that comes directly from my NLP Marin lineage like they are very just like all is here and welcome and you just you resist nothing (laughs) yeah (laughs) you know Mm -hmm. because that's where you have a lot of a lot of freedom and and there's there's nothing that's going to shut a person down including you right with yourself is if you start making is when they're you know made bad and wrong Mm, so a lot of what the key to manifesting in my opinion the key to really creating your life and creating your life consistently and creating big goals consistently because you know, magic is a practice. It's not something you just do when you, when you want to shake the money stick or something. Is learning how to work with our with your human side and your divine side. You know, mm. really work with your human. You know, your human is the one who's actually bringing things from up there to down. Mm. And there's so, so many spiritual traditions just want to eschew <laughs> the human side mm. and... Um, and that, but that's the learning how to work with those things is where, where you can actually make magic because yes. the human is the one that is making the connect is actually the doing the things on the physical that will bring it into, into your world, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I love that we've got here. So, um, <clears throat> Yeah. Wow. I feel like my mind's just gone like in about a billion different directions. It's just like rain it back in. Um, I love so, talking about this stuff. I'm so Oh my goodness. It. Yeah. It's, it's just so, so, so gorgeous. Um, yeah. And I, I also love that we're kind of talking about things that are very like practical and tangible, but also, you know, right out there to kind of like a spiritual you get. And for me, that's more and more, I see that really to be able to be that kind of 
real creator of our lives it is being able to hold the paradox of both and be in that kind of full welcome of both. Like that's required. All about holding mm. paradox. I'm so glad you said that word. Mm. Your, that word. Um, because a key to like, like one of the, the skills that a magician absolutely has to have, and we're seeing it right now, right? In all of the, the great awakening, I will use mm. that. Phrase. People, when I hear, when they hear me say the great awakening, they're like, are you queuing on? Like, no, <laughs> mm. no, I'm not. But I have a lot of light workers who take, a, take it very seriously. And oh, by the way, the light workers have been saying things that Q has been saying for many, 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 many years before Q got here. So we're just going to be with it. <laughs> Mm. Right. And I'll use that word. Um, <laughs> it's, it's like our, our ability to, to create really gets down to on the, like on the, you know, I'm sitting here in the moment, like getting my shit done. Pardon me for swearing again. Like the ability to be with two states, mm. the ability to be with both and to say that both are true, you know, and that's not to say that you never take any, you never have a polarity or you never have an opinion. But it's like, you know what? I can be, I can be with the fact, I'll just use a super practical example. I can be with the fact that my inner nervous system is freaking out right now, mm. right? Because I have to call someone on the telephone and ask them for money. I can be with that state and still pick the phone, put it up to my ear, have a conversation with no human on the other end and ask for money. Right. Mm. Like is the, is the, you know, mm. if we can, the more different states that we can be with at once, the more options that we have and the more choice that we have versus if we can't be with things, then one is automatically going to run the show. I remember years ago, mm. um, one of my uh, teachers, Jesse Corrin, who teaches for Thrive Academy, Charlotte and Jesse, um, best workshop leader I've ever seen in action. And I learned speaking from him years ago. And I never forget, he was like, he was like, what you can't be with owns you. Oh, wow. Yeah. Gosh. You know, mm. if you're up there and his context was, if you're up there on that stage and you've mm. got someone who's got, who's in their resistance and they're challenging you and shaking their finger and whatever, mm. it's very easy to get triggered by that. Mm. But if you can be with it, you, you have ultimate ability of flexibility and choice and yeah, you want, but it can't. It owns you, and I find that yeah. a lot of different contexts. Mm. Yeah, so not to go off on here, but that's a big one. That's like no, big. no. I love, love, love that. Um, yeah. so a couple mm. of things that have come to mind that I think would be juicy to get into. So, when I first started on this path, let's say, like left the corporate world, kind of dived into, at that time, I very much kind of saw it as spirituality. It was very much the path that I would now name as ascension. So. Um, kind of more of like a non-dual and pretty much like this body is an illusion. Let's just focus on the divine. Right. And, and then there, and there's, you know, there's clearly power there. There's that, you know, I'm not in any way dismissing that as a path, but for me, there yeah. was something really profound when I um, entered the path that I kind of now call dissension. So into the body, into the earth, into the soul. Yeah. And it, I find it, that for me, and I suppose you could describe that as also like the masculine's the ascent and the feminine's the, the um, sorry, ascent and the feminine's the descent. Um, yeah. And when, as we're talking here, I'm seeing even more in this that there's, I think the, when you've been able to kind of be in the space of both, you know, be in the space of like being with the divine, also being with the kind of that full embodied experience and being in the paradox of both, there is something having kind of like fully explored both and recognized like, wow, it kind of doesn't make sense that they both are here and yet they are here that allows you to be in those kind of, those moments where it's intense. It's like, it's both. Yeah. And therefore it, this, I'm able to be with those moments of like high sensation because there's yeah. also this other part of me. Um, exactly. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. It's, um, that's so, it's, it's so true. And, and one of the simplest tools that we teach in feminine magic is something I call magician brain. And people here have heard the magician brain and another name, uh, in NLP, it's known as dissociation where you go outside mm. of yourself and you can mm. go to all, you can take these different perceptual positions. You can take 
you know, I can take your perspective right now. I can take the perspective of a neutral observer. I could take the perspective of spirit or God. Um, and we do that all the time because that way we can get, we can be with whatever is mm-hmm. and still be holding this other space. And that's where you get the two existing simultaneously. And this then becomes, you know, not something that is like, a, you know, a curse. I want to get away from it. I don't want to be freaking out right now. You can start to see what's there for you, you know? Mm. And um, there's a lot there. There's even a lot there for people. There's a lot there for us when we are in that nervous system freak out when your nervous system is like recalibrating to a new way of being or whatever the case is. Mm. Because as you know, I'm sure given what you teach, it's like when we start going for something that we really want and we start this transformation process, the body is not happy about it. Mm -hmm. Nervous system, not happy. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. And we'll start throwing up all kinds of shit again. (laughs) You know? Well, I used Mm -hmm. used to really struggle with that. You know, until I realized, wait a minute. I mean, first of all, there's nothing I can do about it. Because I used to, I used to make it about me. Like, well, if I was a better magician, or I was like better at this, and if I, you know, was further along and there already, that I wouldn't be having this recalibration process. Mm. Whereas, if we can be with it, then we go. Oh, actually, I'm really strong. It's really yeah. there's, there's a great deal of strength. For, it comes from being fully in your body when it's experiencing that high sensation mm. and yet still have your power of choice to see the different perspectives and to see, well, I also have this divine side and that hasn't changed. Yeah. You, know? mm. you just reminded me of something I'm fairly sure I've heard you reference um, in the, when we are in that um kind of empowerment creation of a desire, soul desire, it's going to exist outside of the known, our kind of current known reality. So we will have to kind of expand out of our current reality in order to have it, which of course, again, for our our bodies, our nervous system is going to be like, that's unknown, that's a threat, therefore I'm going to freak the hell out. And um, (laughs) I think that's such a helpful way to kind of reckon like, oh no, it's meant to be that way. Like you can't go out of your, if this, the thing exists out of your reality, you're going to have to go out of your comfort zone to get it. Therefore, of course, it's going to feel like it's not comfortable. Um, Yeah. Am I right in thinking? I'm sure I've heard you talk about that before in yeah, that kind yeah. of way. And when I, mm. Yeah, no, definitely. And mm. it's so funny because, you know, I watched my own journey, right? It's like, and and there was a period of time where I was talking about the nervous system and what I call the mystery a lot because I was doing all this up-leveling and I was constantly like, I was constantly in a state of like feeling like I was turned inside out. You know, mm. and um, and I remember thinking to myself, "Oh my gosh, I don't want to set them up for having to experience this as much as I do." <laughs> you know, mm. um, but of course, we attract the right people for us at the time. Mm. So everyone I was attracting was also going through the same thing. And uh, it, yeah, it was. It's it's something that, especially I think in the in the earlier stages, like we all we all get to navigate. You know, mm. we all get to navigate. And I will also say, like. So much of what what I do in terms of kind of practicing magic on the day to day is I pay a lot of attention to my patterns and I pay a lot of attention to kind of like what is it I'm doing, and I try to notice where I'm kind of turning myself into a project Mm -hmm. where I'm choosing to stay with something a little too long because it's Mm. whatever, like it's become a distraction. And there was the point at which like the nervous system stuff sort of started to feel that way. It's time Mm. to let this go. Whatever this need is for me to be in this physicality freak out all the time, (laughs) it's time to let it go. And Mm. one of the reasons why I was able to have that awareness is because, again, I'm holding both those spaces at the same time. Mm. I wouldn't have seen that as, you know, the young witch lit. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's, It's funny. It's, I feel like in this conversation... I've I've seen so much more clearly the um I think it's need. I'd be interested to know if you you feel the same, that both are necessary. Like in order to really um be able to practice magic in a way that 
actually is real, has results. We do actually yeah. need to have the embodiment of both, again, in this languaging, divine and human, like that's required. Yeah. And required. I feel like I've kind of seen that over the last couple of years. And in this conversation, it's just landed really clearly, like with without both and really, I'd say a, a large level of embodiment, understanding, whatever word you want to live, of both, I'd say you're going to be quite limited. Would you agree with that? Would you... Do you see it yeah. that way? Mm. Yeah, definitely. And it's like, and this is, you know, uh, to get back to what we started this conversation with around the engineering and like how that's helped me. I, I can't help. And this, this is to my detriment sometimes. So I'm also, uh, I'm also a really powerful channel and I mm-hmm. don't, I'd like, I, and I'm learning how to do it in a whole different way that I'm not used to and still scares me and all of that. But I have been receiving the downloads for many, many years, right? And a number of years ago, I started learning, you know, I learned the Akashic Records and that's been kind of my tool of choice. And I just opened the records and in comes info and like, that's all again, right? So, but before, before I really- You might need to come that, back and do another show actually. Cause I just remembered, totally I was talking about this is part and it was like, hang on, make sure you ask her about that. And I just realized like, oh my God, why did yeah. I ask you about that? So yeah, we, maybe we need to do a part two. <laughs> so much it's so funny because about. it's like, it's like before I really let that out, the, this, the engineering part, this is another thing. Like I, there's parts of me and I say this for everyone, you know, who can get like, well, kind of wonder why they're so linear because I'm super linear. Like here I am this multidimensional being and we all are and poop and all that. But I, I, there's a part of me that's very much you no know, step at point A, B and C. And I tend to focus on one thing at a time. So, you know, when I was, when I was do, kind of doing the initial stuff around feminine magic, I put everything through the due diligence rigor, everything like the laws, I would learn the laws and I would put myself through all these kind of mental gyrations to establish for myself that they were true or not. Mm. And the human divine piece um, kind of really, it really came out of it. I remember having the big kind of like, holy smokes, no one is talking about this. I'm watching all this stuff about manifesting. This was like in, you know, 2010, 2011, like again, secret was still, it's always fun to watch what's in the, what's in the consciousness and how it changes Mm. over time, right? But at that time, everyone was still very much like way the heck out of their body around it. Mm. And I was like, there's two halves. Like thou art goddess and you're living in a human body. And those mm. things have to cooperate. They have to. And I just, I spent all kinds of time digging into that and how they, how they interact. Because mm. you know? the, physical, wow. the, the physical body mm. is where things come into being. Like, mm. yeah, I can, I can make, Two million dollars in the non-physical. It's as easy as thinking about it, you know. But if we want to get it from there to here, then we have to know how to be able to perceive the opportunities, right? Because manifesting, we were talking about how we how we draw things to us. We draw things to us by embodying a certain vibrational imprint that allows the opportunities that are already there, they already mm. exist, become visible. You know, that's how we manifest. Yeah. But then we also have to, but another reason why we carry that vibrational imprint is so we can take action. Mm. So you can sit and like vibrate the energy of queen all day, but if you're not trans, if that vibration doesn't include like the physical actions that a queen would take in this case. Mm. And you're, uh, you either won't see the opportunity where you'll see the opportunity and it just goes back. Yeah, you know? I love that. We're almost yeah. out of time. We definitely got to do a part two if you're up for that. Happy but tip. one final thing that I've heard you say that I absolutely loved um, is something like um, how everything you want is brought to you is through other people. And yeah. like, oh, I just got chills as I, as I said it there. Like, I love that. I've heard other people say it in like slightly different ways, but when you said it like that, I was just like, I absolutely love that. And I think mm-hmm. that's something again, that's so missed. We look for these kind of, I don't know, when people are starting to step into this world and starting to yeah. play with magic, they're thinking it's going to come in like some really weird intangible way you know maybe not gold ingots raining down but not far off that and I I just love that kind of just first of all the practicality of it again it's going to obey the laws of this realm but also the fact like for me so much of us having this experience on earth is relationships it is 
being with other beings. So it's like gorgeous that that's how it's going to come. Of Mm. of this conversation, because my Mm. whole inner growth journey, all of it has been about relationships and learning. Mm. It's all about relationships. No, really, it's all about relationships. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I'm sorry, I just got really excited there, but yes. Yeah, everything you want. So, do, and this I will credit again. I'll credit David. I, I learned a ton from David Nagel in my early days. He was one of the first teachers, and I I have a tremendous amount of respect for him because he also, in my experience, his energy is very clean. You know, he's mm. not. I remember seeing him in 2009 in one of his seminars, and I came up, and I was still like, you know, like I was just, and I was completely in the same call too. And I said, you know, I think I want to do what you do. You know what he said back to me? He said, you can do that. And I'm like, okay, there is so many guys. That's such an impression. Like I try to be yeah. that. Person. People mm-hmm. are like, I want to be you, Elizabeth. I'd be like, well, you can't be me. You get to be you, but you can do what I do. Like it's totally, mm-hmm. cool, you know, anyway, a little side note, but he, this is where I learned, I learned that from him, that everything comes from source. So everything comes from you know, all this talk on the physical, we don't want to lose there. There is magic here. There's non-physical. Mm. Everything comes from source, but it comes to you by way of opportunities through people. Mm. Every, I mean, even winning the lottery, right? Like that's through a person. That's through a lot of people. That's through the lottery peeps and the person you bought the ticket from, and whatever. It all comes through other people, um, which means that, you know, we have to be in this world. Like we, we have to be mm. in this realm, fully in it, and like, you know, able to connect with people and and be in the in the mess of that and the beauty of that. You know? mm. yeah. yeah, yeah. There's no bypassing that. Oh, no. I've absolutely loved this. I really have. I, again, right. there's just so much more, but I love, love, love what we've got into. It's just been beautiful. Um. Elizabeth, where can listeners find out about you and your amazing work? And yeah, feel free to tell them all of it, please. <laughs> sure. So uh, our company is Feminine Magic. That's, that's our business name. My company is Seven Figure Goddess. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I, we do both business coaching and metaphysics. And a big part of my journey has been like, how do those two things work together? And mm. sometimes the business coaching part is out front. And sometimes the metaphysical part is out front. And it took a little while get used to that um, <laughs> to kind of work that out and uh, where we are now I, all that is to say is that that what we do now like what our kind of our forward-facing specialty is is helping experienced coaches practitioners healers who I call magicians scale to seven figures without all the marketing stuff mm. so without webinars without launches without sales calls we without sales calls like we do it by um, having really really good offers and really good messaging and, and um, using those two things together, which is a beautiful thing. For what that's we another do. whole episode in itself, yeah, isn't it? Okay. Like it's, but that's, that's all about your people. Like mm-hmm. it's all about getting out of mm-hmm. you and getting into your people and like living with your people, basically. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's what we do. So we have, if you go to femininemagic.com, you'll see um, we have a, a, a short video that goes through how we sign up 35k clients without sales calls and that kind of gives you the overview of the business model that we that we do and then of course all the metaphysical teaching is infused in in all of it like all of it and we also have you know we've got manifesting course and a money manifesting course and so you know they're both they're both there our forward-facing thing is is the business pieces, but you don't have to look hard to kind of find the man the manifesting stuff too if you want to start at that spot. Yeah, no more sneaking. <laughs> no, no. It's an old <laughs> habit that dies hard. I find myself doing it sometimes and I <laughs> I'm so over it. <laughs> yeah. No, the world needs you, Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah, the world needs you too. I mean, I can only imagine the amazing conversations that have been on this podcast. And um, I just, I've really enjoyed this and I want to acknowledge you because you're just radiating your light out and doing amazing work in the world. It's really clear um, from everything you share on social and just how you show up. Mm, Oh, thank you so much. Really felt that. Mm. Oh, this has been beautiful. Thank you so, so much. Until the next time, because I'm going to get you back at least once. (laughs) Thank you.
Oh, wow. What a fabulous episode. I really love Elizabeth's combination of brilliance and magic. Here are my takeaways. The logic and structure is needed to be able to move things from the non-physical plane to the physical. We need to understand the principles and laws to make magic to go from intangible to practical. Any shame and blocks in the way of receiving will get in the way of us being able to practice magic. It's important we take care of that shame and those blocks. Both ascension in spirit and ascension to body and soul are required for magic. And lastly, and I love this one, everything comes to you via the laws of this physical plane and almost always comes to you via other people. If you want to get the notes and links for everything we spoke about this week, hop on over to the show notes and they're at primalhappiness.co slash episode 306. And as I said at the start, you are invited to come join us in our free Facebook group. If you're not already a member, come join us. Honestly, it's such a lovely group of people. I'd say quite rare in this modern world and certainly rare when it comes to uh, social media. Um, and that is at facebook.com slash group slash primal happiness. If you don't want to miss out on next week's episode, and oh my goodness, we have got some amazing, really amazing episodes coming up, head on over to Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Stitcher, or your Android or iOS app of choice and hit that subscribe button. That way you will get each episode automatically straight to advice as soon as it comes out. Thank you so much for listening. You've been wonderful. Catch you again next Tuesday.